Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds, in the studio on a Tuesday morning. Chiefs fans, I'll admit it. Probably from the very few times in my life I actually rooted for the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> last night. But things were off uh, to a pretty rough start before the game even started. They were throwing punches out in the pregame warm-ups. What the hell were they doing? Yeah, it's not the only game that's happened to. It happened uh, in a couple of other games aside. You know, boy, the tempers are flaring. I, that's beyond yeah, man, me. It started yet. What are you guys fighting about? Well, if Chiefs fans watch this, and the Chiefs themselves watch it, they could not have been very impressed because uh, I thought Los Angeles looked very mediocre when they played last night. Lose the game, number one, 20-17 to Dallas. That takes nothing away from the Cowboys. I think they're fair. They may be underrated. Maybe a pretty good team, but, you know, Zach, uh, Dak uh, Prescott, I should say, got sacked five times by a rel- relatively mediocre Chargers defense, and that certainly didn't sit well, but their offense couldn't move. You had Justin Herbert, the ball in the air 37 times, completed 22 of them, did have over 200 yards passing, and did throw for a couple of touchdowns, but he also threw for one very critical pick, and uh, that cost them. The ground game that the Chargers have, it, it didn't didn't even show up. The team, the team folks, ran for 53 yards. That's the team. The leading rusher, Austin Eckler, 27 yards by one guy. Come Ooh. on, that's that's dismal. And if Kansas City's looking at that and thinking positively, which they should, my goodness, with the aggressive defense that the Chiefs have and the amount of pressure they can put on the QB and the running backs, a Five and a half is what the Chiefs are favored by prior to last night's game. That's got to go up to about seven now because I don't think the Chargers mount any kind of problem at all and they'll be coming across country. That just was not a very good game. Well, like I said, I watched part of the beginning and I kind of was like, yeah, I think I'll watch a Halloween movie now. (laughs) But uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Never undersell your opponent, you know, any given Sunday and if the Chiefs get caught sleeping against the Chargers, they will bite. So don't do that, guys. But at the same time, makes me feel good on a short week for them and a longer week for us that we have a pretty good time at Arrowhead on Sunday. Um, Mizzou Tigers back in the top 25. As we mentioned yesterday, there were two teams left in the NFL that were undefeated. That is no more. But there are still about seven college teams in the top 25 that are undefeated. And they are all pretty good teams. And I'll tell you, so is Mizzou. They're back in the... Now, when we say the top 25, we're talking about the Associated Press because that's considered to be the the hallmark for all the college rankings, both football and basketball. And the AP has the Tigers at 20th in America following a very nice comeback win over Kentucky. Missouri was down 14 to nothing on the road in Lexington, Kentucky, and it came back to win 38-21. That's a very nice win, and they did it with some really solid play. Cook was outstanding at quarterback, and they got some very good receivers on the team. It's just a good Missouri team. How great they are remains to be seen. Now, Mizzou is home this week. They play South Carolina. Missouri should be a rather substantial favorite over the Gamecocks, but then you still have Georgia to play, and you have Tennessee to play, and uh, Florida to play. I think the uh, Tigers can handle Florida. But over and above all that, it's it's a situation in which the Tigers are pretty good and they are bowl eligible. That was their sixth win, so they're going to a bowl game, but they prefer to go to a big-time bowl as opposed to one of the lesser ones. Bowl games are fine. They love them, but they do, they're categorized and the lesser and the big ones. Let's see what happens. Fingers crossed. How are you doing in your week to week? Well, had a fair week last week, but lose a big one. Lost mm. that <laughs> doggone Coach Prime and his I team. don't know why you follow the Flash. <laughs> I told you, stay away from that guy, but he keeps hurting you. Ned's never going to learn. All right, so um, we did talk a little bit about some of the challenges Missouri are going to face down the road, some of the challenges the other top-rated college teams are facing. Well, Georgia, the number one team, is idle this week, so their challenge is just to rest and relax and get well. Number two, Michigan goes to arch-rival Michigan State. Michigan State, folks, in football is not very good. Not having a good year. Disarray. Rutgers beat them last week by three. Rutgers should have won by more than that. But Michigan State against Michigan, it's an arch rivalry. They play in East Lansing. The crowd will be very much pro-Spartans and anti-Wolverines, even though they're, what, about maybe 50, 60 miles apart. But the fact is that Michigan should win. Ohio State is 
host, and this is a big one. Ohio State is host to 7th ranked Penn State. And that game's at Ohio Stadium in Columbus. That will be a very big one. Florida State is host to 16th ranked Duke. Florida State 7th in America and playing, I beg your pardon, 4th in America and playing very well. Duke is number 16. Fifth ranked Washington, which came up with a big win over Oregon. They are a huge favorite over Arizona State. That's a, a really big game. Is 17th ranked Tennessee playing at 11th ranked Alabama. Don't sell Alabama short. They didn't look very good against Arkansas. Only won the game by three, 24-21. But the Tide under Nick Saban can play very tough football. And they're playing the Tennessee Volunteers in Tuscaloosa. That will be a very big game. There are a number of big games going on across the country. This is a very interesting weekend coming up. Yeah, if you had fun watching some of those matchups last weekend, guess what, buddy? You're going to have fun watching a lot of great matchups this weekend. So it looked like the Phillies had themselves a time last night in the playoffs, (laughs) wouldn't you say? They did. It was a heck of a game right down to the wire. Philadelphia uh, did defeat the Arizona Diamondbacks 5-3. Talk about that in a second. The Texas Rangers now have a two games to none lead over the World Series champs, the reigning champs, the Houston Astros. Beat the Astros yesterday 5-4, and both those games were in Houston. That series now moves to Arlington, upstate in the Dallas area, and the Texas Rangers will have three games there, three if necessary. The Rangers did it with four runs in the first inning off of uh, usually a pretty good Astros pitcher, Framber Valdez, but he did not have it yesterday. Marcus Simeon had a couple of hits. Adonis Garcia, former Springfield Cardinal, had an RBI in that one. And now they resume tomorrow. They get the uh, day off to travel from Houston to Dallas. <laughs> That's a big, big trip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's part of the TV. Now, the Philadelphia-Arizona game, this is interesting because Zach Gallen. Another former Springfield Cardinal got the start for Arizona, and he's pitching very well. He's one of the top pitchers in all of baseball, not just the National League. But Gallen, as we mentioned, 2017 with the Springfield Cardinals before they traded him to Miami in a, in a big deal, was also pitching in front of many of his family and friends because he's from the Philly area. He's from the Jersey side of the Delaware River and from Bishop Eustis and Camden. And then at the University of North Carolina, All-America there, this guy is a really good pitcher, and he's getting nothing but better. However, you're facing some, some, uh, some sluggers in Philadelphia before their big, raucous crowd. Uh, Kyle Schwarber led off the game with a home run. Bryce Harper had a home run. Nick Castellanos had a home run. They're the big guns in the Philadelphia attack. And the Phillies were up at 1.5 to nothing. Let that get away, not completely, but the Diamondbacks, who are really good folks and can play, it came back and made it 5-3 to three before <laughs> Philadelphia, not before some perspiring moments, was able to pull out the ball game and win it 5-3. Those teams play again tonight at Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia. You know, Mike, we talked about what the level of home field and home court and all that advantage. Well, in, in football, it's partial. In basketball, it's significant. And in baseball, it's usually just, oh, hey, playing away, so what? Not in Philadelphia. That crowd has a very big effect on the home team, on the Phillies. And that's one of the reasons why they were able to pull it out. Can they continue that? Hey, Arizona's a tough ball club. They are a tough ball club, but when you got a fan base that are yelling at the pitchers in the bullpen about their mom... <laughs> Kind of messes with your head a little bit. Preseason rankings are after college basketball. Any surprises at the top? Not really. Uh, you have uh, the uh, Kansas is number one, and they're far and away the choice to be number one. They're really good. Self has had a tremendous recruiting year. When does he not have a tremendous recruiting year? KU will be the number one choice in America. But number two, a bit of a surprise, Duke, uh, with Coach Shire, John Shire in there as their coach now for the second year. They weren't real good to start off the year in the 2022-23, but they're now pick number two, and they should be really good. Purdue is the number three choice. They have the player of the year, 7'4", Zach Eady. He is a tremendous challenge. Michigan State, number four, Marquette, under Shaka Smart, who's been around the coaching circles now for a number of years. He has the Marquette Golden Eagles at number five. Arkansas is a pick for 13th. Mizzou is not in the preseason top 25, but according to all the reports, Coach Gates has done a very nice job of recruiting, and, and we'll see what the Missouri Tigers are able to come up with. But at the moment, not in the top 25. Last but not least, uh, Ned brought in his big old dusty book of facts, so I know today's a history day. What happened 34 years ago, my man? You you may remember this, Mike, and you may not be. You're, you were a kid, and 
still in your formative uh, youth as a as an elementary student. But this is the date in 1989, Game 3 of the World Series between the San Francisco Giants and the Oakland A's. It was the Bay Area World Series. And they were all set to take the field at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. And two minutes before the first pitch, a 6.9 earthquake. Do you not remember that? Hell no, I don't oh, remember yeah. that. It shook everything, knocked the TV off. Not before Al Michaels says, what? This is an earthquake bing! It, it stopped right there. And, uh, and it was a serious 6.9. Uh, I think there were 43 fatalities in the thing. And the World Series was halted, of course, for 10 days after that. They did resume, and the Oakland A's swept the Giants in four games. But what a frightening moment that was, and certainly one of the most unique, disastrous unique. Uh, unique. From that standpoint, though, uh, baseball did recover and played well. But an earthquake stopping the World Series, who would have thought that would have ever happened? God, just walk into your seat. Can you imagine, Ned? You have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow.